Greetings everyone. I am Dr. Judith Galang Perez, an obstetrician gynecologist and reproductive medicine specialist here at Asian Hospital and Medical Center. And we welcome all of you as we celebrate PCOS Awareness Month this September. I am here this uh, in this encounter so that I may be able to answer some of the common questions that you may have about polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. What is polycystic ovarian syndrome? PCOS is a common metabolic and endocrine disorder. It affects young women, women of reproductive age, and even premenopausal women. So it may be diagnosed as early as 15 years old, then throughout the woman's life, up until probably nearing the time of menopause, which is on the average about 50%. So having irregular uh, menstrual period is one of the most important information to establish when evaluating women for this condition. So, um, for us women, there is a regularity and periodicity in our menstrual cycles. You know? So, any deviation from the normal, whether it be um, it's not coming in every month or you're having several months of not having your periods, or maybe you're having light to heavy uh, bleeding in between your periods. So, all of these things would warrant an evaluation with your obstetrician gynecologist or OB-GYN. Additionally, the findings of acne, you know, particularly here in the chin area or here in the lower part of the cheek, prominence of body hair, predominantly in the upper lip and also along the jawline probably in the upper arm or in the lower leg and the thinning of head hair are also important by this. So, your attending OBGYN will proceed to conduct blood tests and probably request for imaging studies like the transvaginal ultrasound so that these things you know, together will help support your impression of PCOS. What are the causes of PCOS? Is it hereditary? There is no single factor that causes PCOS. Scientists who have studied this condition reports that it is a result of several factors acting together. So we call that multifactorial. However, there is uh, there are clear evidences that there is the genetics play a major role. There is a higher prevalence of PCOS between mother and daughters. Or even in siblings, no, particularly uh, those who are twins, and there may be a cluster of this condition among uh, women who are first degree relatives, no. In the presence of strong genetic no, predisposition, there is also a strong contribution of environmental influences that may be present from the time that you were at the womb up to the time that you were born. As you were going into um, puberty and adolescence, being a young woman, to the present, you know, uh, your diet and lifestyle actually would have a big role in the expression and development of PCOS. What are the early symptoms of PCOS and when does PCOS usually exist? So, like I mentioned earlier, we, women have predictable and regular menstrual cycles. No? Any deviation from the normal cycle interval of about 25 to 30 days for young for an adult woman or 21 to 45 days for an adolescent would lead one to suspect no, that they they might be or they might have PCOS. Intermittent bleeding patterns, no? so having um, bleeding uh, infrequently for several times during the year or over many cycles is, a, is also a symptom. So the diagnosis of PCOS, however, does not rely no, only on the character of the process. Other criteria of and signs of hyperandrogenesis like acne, um, hirsutism, female pattern hair loss are also important clinical signs. So, expression of PCOS is usually at the time of puberty. But since it is a lifelong condition, it may manifest at any time during a woman's life. Frequently, 
when a woman gains weight, you know, the problems of abnormal bleeding patterns in PCOS will manifest. In some women, they may have no menses for a long period of time. A significant number of women who desire to get pregnant, you know, the diagnosis of PCOS might be uncovered at the time that they're having infertility evaluation. So these are some of the scenarios we're in. It may lead to the diagnosis of PCOS. What should I do if I have these symptoms and I still get pregnant? As women, you know, we should listen to our bodies. And having irregular menstrual cycles or menses is a strong signal from within that there is something going on. So a visit to your OBGYN will definitely help. She will listen to your symptoms. She will perform a thorough physical examination. She will proceed to request some blood tests and imaging studies in the form of a transvaginal ultrasound. And depending on the checklist of criteria satisfied, a diagnosis of PCOS will be made. To answer the second part of the question, huh? can I still get pregnant? Okay, so having PCOS does have an impact on getting pregnant. How? Because it reduces you know, the time that the woman ovulates, and if she does, it may be mistimed you know, with the timing of their contact, you know, as Ms. Van and White. And this contributes to the lengthening of the time of achieving a pregnancy. However, once PCOS is diagnosed and managed, yes, a woman has a very good chance of achieving a pregnancy. So, to answer that question, yes, a woman who's, who has PCOS can get pregnant, especially if there are no other um, factors identified contributing to infertility and if properly managed under the care of your individual. Are there any treatments available for PCOS? Yes. The treatment strategy that will depend on number one, patient symptoms. Number two, the patient's goal for seeking treatment. So, one woman may be bothered by her irregular menses or the absence of her menses and therefore would like to target cycle control. That can be treated. Another woman would want to achieve pregnancy at the soonest possible time. That's another treatment goal. And yes, that can be targeted. So, in, in the encounters no, with your OBGYN, she will help identify the treatment plan that would best answer your needs and would best benefit you in line with your priority. Can combined hormonal birth control pills be effective in treating PCOS? Yes, the use of PCOS is one of the first-line treatments that can be offered, especially for women who have abnormal uterine patterns secondary to PCOS. In a small subset of women who may have contraindications for the use of COCs, progestins may be um, used to address this concern. Now, if a woman wants to get pregnant, then the treatment plan shifts no? and she will be given medications for ovulation. However, it must be emphasized no, that the treatment strategy for PCOS does not start and end with just taking medications. Diet and lifestyle modifications is an important cornerstone in the management of PCOS. An overweight woman, if she will be able to target just a loss of about 5% of her body weight, will actually have a beneficial effect on um, restoring her normal menstrual cycles and restoring her fertility. So, having good food choices and regular aerobic exercise, let's say about 30 to 45 minutes no, um, a day, making it three to four times in a week, no, are good interventions no, for PCOS women. Is PCOS life-threatening? Is it a lifelong problem? Yes, PCOS is a lifelong condition that deserves early management and intervention. Paying attention to PCOS now 
will mean that you will be less likely to suffer from the metabolic consequences of having this condition for a long period of time. These metabolic consequences could be the development of metabolic syndrome, development of diabetes mellitus, having cardiovascular um, conditions like hypertension and stroke, and developing endometrial hyperplasia and cancer. So, these are the ones which can be life threatening later on in life. If PCOS is diagnosed early, is managed appropriately, and if the woman would have lifelong good food choices and lifestyle um, interventions, then we decrease the risk of these lifetime constraints. Managing PCOS is a matter of choice and power. So having a forum like this, uh, PCOS Awareness Month, allows us your OBGYNs to bridge the information to you so that with, with greater understanding and knowledge, you will choose to take care of yourself and be aware of the implications as well as the consequences of these people. The impact you know, to a woman's life differs according to your life stage, but the message will be the same. PCOS is a lifelong condition. It can be managed according to your needs and you can take a proactive role for choosing a healthier lifestyle so that you may manage this condition. I thank you for listening in and I pray that you all be safe. Thank you.